Trump indicted in Georgia. It's ugly, and it looks like it's going to be ugly. We'll talk about that tonight. Hunter Biden's crimes, the Afghanistan pullout anniversary, that and so much more coming up tonight on I'm Right. By the time we bring you I'm Right tomorrow night, it will be stamped, signed, sealed, delivered. Trump will have indictment number four coming on him. I am sad to say I was right. That was me last night. It wasn't exactly a bold or amazing prediction. Anyone could see it coming. It obviously came down today. Donald Trump, 18 co-conspirators being charged with 41 charges. Now, I saw this coming. You saw this coming. That doesn't make us geniuses. It makes us people who understand where we are, what kind of country we have now. Look, I, look, I called this back in 2022. Here I was. Remember, I'm not your mommy. It's not my job to powder your butt for you and tell you everything will be okay. I am America's daddy, so I'm about to tell you how it is. They're going to indict Donald Trump. They're almost undoubtedly going to indict Donald Trump and arrest Donald Trump. And the chances are not zero that that arrest of Donald Trump comes on television. And they already came out today and bragged that there will be a Trump mugshot in Fulton County, Georgia. Now, why did you see this coming? Why did I see this coming? Not because of what's happening now, because of history. Because I understand who and what we're dealing with, and I'm sad to say the low-T GOP does not have that understanding. I understand that we're not dealing with leftists, liberals, progressives. We are dealing with committed communists. We are dealing with people who will destroy all, burn all, arrest all, hurt all, kill all, because that's what communists do. Fanny Willis, the DA in this thing, she's not a progressive. She's not a soft on crime prosecutor. She's an apparatchik. She's a communist foot soldier. She's the tip of the spear. That's what she is, and that's how she sees herself. You ever heard of the name Lev Kamenev? You ever heard of the name? Because, and the reason I bring him up is this. I've seen a lot of people, a lot of people, and I know this is just trying to cope with a horrible situation, saying things like, this is so ridiculous. The charges are ridiculous. Oh, it's crazy. Supreme Court's going to throw it all out. This is crazy. These are ridiculous. Almost uh, like a laughing it off thing. Well, yeah, of course the charges are ridiculous. Why do you think that changes anything? Anyway, Lev Kamenev, he was a committed communist too, so don't feel bad about the guy, but he came up with Stalin and Lenin when there was that whole Rus Russian Revolution thing. And Lev Kamenev was very popular. He was popular in the party. He was popular, and then he ended up having kind of a falling out with, with Stalin after Stalin took over. Anyway, that's not important. The important part is this. Stalin decided Lev Kamenev had to go. That's it. He just he was too popular. Stalin didn't like his popularity, and he decided Lev Kamenev had to go. So he arrested Lev Kamenev, framed him for an assassination that Lev Kamenev took no part in whatsoever. He was charged with that conspiring to assassinate somebody, even though he had nothing to do with it. The charges were ridiculous. Only the difference between the Soviets then and us now is the Soviets then understood that, yes, the charges were ridiculous, but it's not a laughing matter because the end has already been written. The trial was scripted, written. The judges, the sentencing, the everything. The Soviets understood they lived in an evil country, an evil system, and once the system grabs you, it's over. This Trump story is heartbreaking, and it's awful, and I hate it, and you hate it, and it's terrible for the country. But don't hang on to some ridiculous false hope that I see some people selling out there. The end has been written. Don't be banking on the Supreme Court. Don't be banking on the jury, seeing how ridiculous this is. These are the Moscow show trials. Lev Kamenev 
was of course convicted, as he knew he would be. Lev Kamenev even ended up confessing, even though he was innocent, trying to save the life of his family in vain. He was lined up against the wall and shot. His entire family, except for his youngest son, they were also killed as well. But none of it shocked the Soviets, the Soviet people, because they understood their government was wholly evil and ridiculous charges weren't laughed off. They were simply accepted as what was going to be a vehicle to get rid of political opponents. It saddens me that that's the country we live in, but that's why I've been able to predict all this stuff, and that's why you have as well. This is what evil communist governments do. Here's communist foot soldier Fannie Willis from today. Earlier today, there was a fictitious document, according to the Fulton County Courts Office, that was circulated online with charges against former President Donald Trump. Those, that fictitious document uh, matched exactly the charges that we now see in this indictment. Can you tell us more about that document, Lee? No, I can't tell you anything about um, what you refer to. I am not an expert on clerks duties um, or even administrative duties. I wouldn't know how to work that system and so I'm not going to speculate. Next question. Fictitious document. You hear how he put it? There was a fictitious document that just so happened to match all the exact same charges that were announced today. Joining me now, Cornell Law Professor, founder of Legal Insurrection, Bill Jacobson. Okay, uh, Bill, what irregularities, I guess I'll put it in a very political term, what irregularities are you seeing with this whole Atlanta mess we've got going? Well, I think what you just witnessed on the clip you showed is the smugness and the arrogance of people who think they have absolute power and can employ it with impunity. And that's what really is shocking about what's happening in Georgia. By contrast, Jack Smith, who I think has been accused of the same thing, was relatively sedate compared to what went on in Georgia. I mean, they're already announcing, we're putting this mugshot out there. They're going to turn it into a circus. They have thrown the kitchen sink, not just at Donald Trump, but at 18 people who surround him and put 30 people on some level of notice that they're unindicted co-conspirators. So what's going on in Georgia is very different than even Jack Smith has done in Miami and DC. It, you said it looks like they can just, well, they act like they they can do what they want with impunity, but can't they? I mean, that's the dangerous situation we're in, when it, whether we're in New York City with Alvin Bragg or Jack Smith in DC or Fannie Willis in Atlanta. These Democrat hotbeds are places where they do control every lever of power and can do whatever they want and charge people with ridiculous things. Can they not? I mean, what's to stop them? Well, there's very little, and, and that's why they act the way they act, and that's why they do what they do. There is no check and balance at the state level in deep blue cities and deep blue states. Remember, these are Alvin Bragg and Fannie Willis are two local prosecutors. Now, Alvin Bragg's is a stale seven-year-old claim Put that aside. But Fannie Willis is charging a major presidential candidate with election fraud for a federal election, not a state election, not a local election, for which he is already being charged by the Department of Justice, the U.S. Department of Justice. This is piling on. This is trying to create a backstop that if for some reason Jack Smith is not successful, that she will be there waiting to get Trump and the people around him. This is very dangerous stuff. And this is, as you indicate, they, they can, in fact, get away with it. I mean, the attorney general of New York, who's not involved in these cases, ran on a platform of not only getting Donald Trump, but getting his family. And they get away with it in these deep blue states. But what happens in the deep blue states has national implications, as we're seeing. Bill, Trump's lawyer had this response as the indictments were coming down. This is ridiculous that the cameras are even watching this right now, frankly. I mean, it's unprofessional, yeah. it's unethical, and it's un-American. It is part of the show. This is a show. It's a political show. Fanny, I can do TV, too. It is not okay what you are doing. This is unacceptable. I, the fact that we have cameras... Okay, Bill, she looks worried. What, if you're Trump's lawyer, or just a concerned citizen, which of these cases should genuinely worry you the most? Or are they all worrisome? I don't see how he gets out of any of these because of the despicable system he's involved in. 
Yeah, I think they should all worry him. Uh, I've written since last March that the one that should worry Donald Trump the most was the Miami case, the records case, because it was the least convoluted legal theory. And here you've got a RICO claim in Georgia, you've got um, in DC, you've got similar sort of conspiracy claims, which might be subject probably on appeal to attack uh, as insufficient, but of course that's after a trial's take, took, taken place. So yes, I, I think Trump is in a lot of legal difficulty, but it's even more, and this is why the qualitatively what Fannie Willis is doing is so different. She's named 18 people. She's indicated there's 30 co-conspirators, unindicted co-conspirators, which means they could be added to the case later on. She is attempting to freeze the Trump wing of the Republican Party, which is about half of the party. She's attempting to freeze them. We saw this happen in Wisconsin several years ago with the John Doe investigations, where a Democrat local prosecutor using the Wisconsin John Doe law, which no longer exists in that form anymore, essentially froze the entire conservative movement by making so many people targets of the investigation. People stopped talking to each other. People stopped doing normal political behavior because they were afraid. And that's what Fannie Willis is doing. And that's very different than what even Jack Smith has done. Jack Smith named Donald Trump, and that's it. Fannie Willis is spreading out throughout the Trump wing of the party and making it known that there may be more to come. And so she's freezing political activity. She's freezing lawful political activity because people will be afraid to communicate with each other. Bill, whenever I bring up this trouble that he's in and how ugly this is going to be, inevitably someone will say, well, the Supreme Court's going to get rid of all of this. Uh, I'm not a legal expert like you are. How much faith should I have that of these four different indictments, the Supreme Court's just going to laugh them all off and toss them, assuming that he's guilty or found guilty of all of them? Well, I think you have to take them one at a time. And I, I think that the one that's most susceptible to being reversed by the Supreme Court would be the, the one that's in the District of Columbia and also the Manhattan one. The Manhattan one is essentially a concocted legal theory that I think a federal court at the end of the process would throw out. Uh, same with the one in DC, it's susceptible the, the novel application of various laws to a political election, I think is susceptible. The Georgia one's gonna be tough because it's gonna go through the state court system. It's going to be years before it reaches the Supreme Court. And by throwing so many things into one case, there are discrete pieces of the Georgia case, which could have very easily been charged separately, like supposedly breaking into a computer system. If that was done, that could have been charged two years ago, but they waited till now. And, and so I think he's in a lot of legal trouble. And I've been saying this on my website for a while and people you know, uh, attack that, but hey, I'm, I live in the real world and, and the real world is telling us that Donald Trump is in a lot of legal problems He's probably going to get convicted in one or more of these cases. And people need to wake up and people need to understand what's happening. And people also need to understand that, well, he is not to blame for the hyper partisan actions of the prosecutors. He left himself very vulnerable. He handed a lot of this stuff to them on a silver platter and they are now exploiting it. And it's a, it's a bad situation. And now he's going to roll out apparently Monday, a new report about Georgia election fraud. I mean, are you kidding me? It's two and a half years later. What is the end game here? And Trump supporters don't seem to understand. What is your end game? There is no process to decertify an election that took place two and a half years ago. The way you stop this growing totalitarianism is to win the next election. But everything they're doing is set up to lose the next election. They've, you've got to win the next election because Fannie Willis and Alvin Bragg and Jack Smith are just the first of a wave of totalitarian attacks using the law enforcement and prosecutorial powers of the state that's coming our way. Golly. Thank you for a, a sobering message we all needed to hear, Bill. Come back soon. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you. What a mess. <laughs> what a mess. All right. Hey, I know that made you uncomfortable because it made me uncomfortable, but he's, he's right now.
know what else makes me uncomfortable? Stray dogs. I, look, I, you know, I'm not even a, a, a major animal lover. I like animals a lot, respect them. I'm not one of these super duper animal lovers, but dogs, when I see them and they, I know they've been abandoned, they get abandoned all the time on the side of the road. That freaking sucks. Such a loyal, wonderful creature. And that's why I love Delta Rescue. Because Delta Rescue, it's the largest no-kill, care-for-life animal shelter on the planet. On the planet. Decades. Decades of taking in these animals and not just not killing them, caring for them for life. Delta Rescue. You want to help them out? Tax deductible. They do what they do because of you. Go to deltarescue.org and help them do what they do. All right? We'll be back. Fancy meeting you. Oh, here. I so can't nice believe this. <laughs> yeah, this is not the circumstances in which I expected to be talking to you. Nor me, Rachel. It's always good to talk to you, but honestly, um, I didn't think that it would be under these circumstances. Yet another set of indictments. If bad actors tell us falsely that every election is stolen and that the only way an election is uh, trustworthy as if they come out on top of it, um, then something, it's, it, it's, it tells you something not just about that person or that moment. It maybe wounds us as a democracy and in a way that is hard to repair. Oh, there is no repairing it. Look at Hillary Clinton. The glee on her face. You know, part of me, part of me tips my cap to that annoying hag because, God love her, she came out on top. She's going to skate with all her crimes scot-free, and Trump's going to go to prison. Joining me now, Natalie Winters, executive editor of The War Room, super talented. We'd love having her on. Okay, Natalie, look, the enemy's out there spiking the football and having a grand old time, and you know what? They should. Well, look, I always like to say, you know, we've crossed the Rubicon, but I think at this point we, we've run out of Rubicons to cross with this fourth indictment that curiously dropped sort of with the whole weird of being uploaded before uh, it was actually official. Everyone likes to use the term banana republic, but frankly, I think that's unfair to banana republics because what we're seeing here is just pure unbridled suppression of what is the populist movement in this country. What is a leader like Donald Trump, someone who stands up to the administrative state? They are trying to make an example out of him time after time after time after time, that is four times to be exact with these indictments. But it's important to remember the lawfare against Donald J. Trump didn't just start with these indictments. It started all the way back when he announced his campaign through the impeachments, through the personnel subversion, all the way through to the COVID-19 pandemic. And frankly, they show no signs of stopping. Yeah, no, we walked uh, on my radio show last night. We walked people through the escalation from the 2016 campaign under Obama to now how they've just ramped up and up and up. And this is what I'm trying to get through to people on the right, Natalie, because a lot of people just don't want to accept this. It gets worse from here. This isn't the culmination. This isn't some end. It gets worse from here as these communists do what communists do. Well, I think that's the key point to underscore here. And while we can obviously link these indictments to the curious time frame that always seems to overlap with another damning piece of evidence coming out about the Biden family, but for all of the talk about the financial compromise that the Biden family members have, whether it's with the Chinese Communist Party, uh, with Kazakhstan, with Georgia, with Ukraine, with Russia, you name it, I think that the compromise extends beyond just financial compromise, blackmail, obvious conflicts of interest. But I think the key point here too, Jesse, is that it's ideological compromise too. You know, these people, the Biden regime, they are conducting themselves like the Chinese Communist Party and how they are persecuting. And I use that word persecuting, not just prosecuting Donald J. Trump. And I think that that is a side effect of having gone into business and worked alongside these authoritarian regimes because I think they were exposed to the levels of power and dictatorial control that they have over their people, over their political opposition. And I think, to be frank, the Biden regime is envious of the authority and power that the Chinese Communist Party has, the way that they subjugate and suppress 
their own people because they're using those same exact tactics, not just on Donald Trump, but on the MAGA movement writ large. Yeah. Yeah, these people, they do see themselves as kings and queens. Okay, the latest indictment, the ridiculous show out of Atlanta. Yes, it's all ridiculous. It's all absurd, charging with Rico and everything else. But that doesn't mean he's going to get out of it because Fulton County is Moscow. Well, the indictment, if you if you actually read it, it is so absurd. And I think it's sort of like in the early days of the first impeachment of Donald J. Trump. You know, you had people screaming around saying, what are we going to do about this? You know, we got to fight back. This is so outrageous. But that's not a strategy to push forward. That was sort of the, the impetus of the original War Room impeachment show, right? We needed a strategy session to push forward. And, and I think that we need to have a similar approach um, all the way from congressional Republicans. I think we're seeing the Trump campaign lead on this, but how to actually combat this because just screaming about it doesn't really do anything. But I think it is important to know uh, the facts of the case. If you take the time to read the indictment, I mean, I, I posted them on my, my Twitter, but some of the charges, the acts, they, you know, one through 100 that they list, it's things like saying, go watch OAN, go watch the hearings on RSBN Network, go watch <laughs> the hearings on Newsmax, it, even saying, I'm going to call Mike Pence a wimp, which I think is a valid statement. Um, but really, it, it's not even just about criticizing free speech. I really think it represents what I said in the beginning, a broader effort to, to suppress and make an example out of one of the foremost leaders of the populist movement here in the United States. Yeah. That's theory. All right, I want to switch gears here real quick before I let you go. Jennifer Granholm. Now, I don't need any extra help from anybody to hate Jennifer Granholm. I hated her for a long time. She, however, is tied to China, and you wrote about this. What's the deal? Super weird. There are a lot of these weird coincidences that go on in the Biden regime that always overlap with Hunter Biden's business interests. People may recall that she had secret of phone calls with her Chinese Communist Party counterpart just days before the United States drained our strategic uh, petroleum reserve. And what I dug into, what I found out was that the Chinese Communist Party member that she spoke with before doing this action um, actually has financial and business ties to Hunter Biden. He used to be on the board of directors and actually the vice president at a Chinese oil and gas refinery known as Sinopec. Uh, which back, I believe, in 2015 actually enjoyed a $1 billion investment from Hunter Biden's BHR partners in exchange for a 30% stake in what was an offshoot called Sinopec Marketing. Um, again, remember, Hunter Biden never fully uh, disclosed whether or not he had divested his stake in that investment firm. So this, again, just goes to sort of the MO of the Biden regime, which is you can sort of reverse engineer all of their policies uh, as to what benefits Hunter Biden's pocketbook the best. Yeah, these friggin' people are filthy. Natalie, you're the best. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. God, those people. The, the worst people in the world run our country. And, you know, the worst people in the world also run our monetary system. I should, I should point that out. You know that money printing they did during COVID, and you were yelling about it, and I was yelling about it? This is insane. Stop it. You're wrecking the dollar. You know they're still doing it? They're still printing money and passing trillion dollar bills. We are uh, fiscally, look, let's set the show trials aside for a moment. Fiscally, that car is coming towards the cliff here. Do you have protection? The only way to protect yourself against them wrecking the dollar is precious metals. There's no other way. Do you have gold or silver coins in your physical possession? Do you have it in your 401k or IRA? Or you're just gonna watch that go to zero when the old bubble pops. Oxford Gold will handle all this for you because I don't know how to do any of that. You probably don't know how to do any of that. How do, where do I get gold coins? How do I get it in my IRA? Oxford Gold knows, and they make it easy. Call 833-995-GOLD. I send my family to Oxford. Friends, it's, it's, it's the only place I go to. 833-995-GOLD. Tell them I told you to call. They'll take care of you, I promise, all right? We'll be back. Two years ago, 
That was two years ago. Plane takes off, those poor souls falling from the wheels as the plane takes off. Two years ago, the Taliban took over Kabul. I'm sure you remember 11 days later, a suicide bomber killed 13 of our great warriors. It was an international embarrassment. It was horrific for our military, for the families of the people who died and people who were injured. It has done a ton to destroy the military and America's standing in the world. Do keep in mind, a big reason why Russia went marching right into Ukraine is because they watched how we handled Afghanistan. A big reason why lifelong service members are getting out and they're telling their children not to join is because of what happened in Afghanistan. And one of the worst things about it wasn't just the failure of what we did two years ago. It was that nobody, top to bottom, took even an ounce of responsibility for what happened there. When I came into office, I inherited a deal that President Trump negotiated with the Taliban. I know there are concerns about why we did not begin evacuating Afghan civilians sooner. Part of the answer is some of the Afghans did not want to leave earlier. So what's happened? Afghanistan political leaders gave up and fled the country. The Afghan military collapsed, sometime without trying to fight. If anything, the developments of the past week reinforced that ending U.S. military involvement in Afghanistan now was the right decision. Cold. We've talked about this before. If you had to try to describe the Biden administration in one word, cold might be the best way. There are probably a bunch of words you could use. I don't know that all of them are fit for TV, but just so cold about everything, an international embarrassment. Our warriors dead. And he gets up and gives some weird speech about, hey, they didn't even want to leave. Which leads me to what's going on in Hawaii right now. Speaking of cold, Hawaii is an American state, beautiful state. Many people have visited there on vacation. There are Americans in Hawaii, like all of them, American citizens. These are our people. They're burning right now. They're dying. Their lives are being destroyed. The president of the United States of America was asked about it, and here's what he had to say. Um, what? Cold. They don't care. They don't pretend to care. This goes back to what we've talked about a million times about the characteristics these people share. All of them, the three characteristics. They see themselves as kings and queens. They're, they have no idea how normal people live. And most importantly for this one, there's no love of country. Oftentimes they hate it, but there's no love like you have inside of you. They just don't care at all. They can't, they can't even be bothered to learn the name of one of the senators from Hawaii. Senator Harino, who I said the president spoke to uh, just last night, he thanked the president uh, for the immediate support of federal agencies have delivered for residents of Hawaii. Yeah, Harino. <laughs> her name's Maisie Harono. But don't feel bad for her getting her name mispronounced. You see, Maisie Hirono is a communist. She's a communist. And so as a communist, she doesn't see any devastation ever and feel things for people because communists, above all, they're anti-humans. That's why they can look at something unspeakably bad like a school shooting, something that breaks your heart, a school shooting, dead kids and you're sitting there heartbroken, and you're thinking about the parents, and oh my gosh, those poor kids, and what they went through, and the communist doesn't see any of that, and that doesn't feel any of that. The communist sees that, and he just sees an opportunity, because he's an anti-human. Maisie Hirono is a senator from the state of Hawaii. That's her state. Those are specifically her people. And as she watches people burn to death, homes wiped out, destroyed, lives ruined, Maisie Hirono doesn't feel some tug inside of her, some broken heart. My goodness, those people, how can I help? What can we do? Maisie Hirono only sees an opportunity. 
I think that we, uh, we very much need to acknowledge uh, that climate change is upon us. There are whole states, by the way, Jake, where you can't even the, you use the words climate change because they still have a hit in the sand attitude. Climate change? People are dying. People are dying as we speak. But the communist, I lose him right when I say people. People, you might as well be speaking a foreign language to communists whenever you bring up people or human beings to them. They don't see anybody in those terms. We really are led by the coldest, most evil people on the planet, not in America, on the planet. Remember that. We're going to talk to Jordan Schachtel about Joe Biden's comments. Shoot, maybe it's just his age. Maybe he's not all there. Jordan Schachtel has a lot to say about that next. Before we get to that with Jordan, I want to get to this. Your air, it needs cleaned. It does. You have viruses and mold in your air. We don't like to think about that, that we're breathing in viruses and mold all around us. That sucks, but we have to acknowledge the reality of it. Clean your air. Why does it smell so good outside after a thunderstorm? because that's how nature cleans the air. You can experience that in your home without the wetness of the thunderstorm with an Eden Pure. Eden Pure Thunderstorm, greatest air purifier ever. It's just this little black box goes right in the outlet in the wall. It will remove odors from your air. I, I took care of my allergies. I'm allergy free now, thanks to Eden Pure. You have to go to EdenPureDeals.com and use the promo code JESSE. That gets you $200 off a three pack. EdenPureDeals.com, promo code JESSE. We'll be back. Joe Biden gives another little smirk there as Maui burns, apparently. He was so shamed by all his laugh off, no comment things that he finally came out and say, made some little stupid statement. And then he announced he's sending them all $700, $700 stimulus check. Hey, sorry about your home. Here's 700 bucks. Joining me now, my buddy Jordan Schachtel. You need to go subscribe to his Substack called The Dossier. Jordan, I don't know what all these Hawaiians are worried about. They have $700 coming, gosh. Yeah, I, I just got back from vacation in Maui and the price of gas for regular fuel is over $5 a gallon and everything's more expensive, oh. you know, because of the import situation. So the $700 will last you like maybe uh, three days in Maui. And, you know, if you have a $700,000 house that burned down, I don't know if that $700 is really going to cut it for now. You know, I, I, I did the uh, back of the napkin math on that and there's about 71,000 homes in Maui. And seven hundred dollars and times seventy one thousand is less than fifty million dollars. And we're talking about a government with a multi trillion dollar annual budget. So it's such an uh, you know infantile percentage of it's just it's just absurd and it should be offensive to every American because these are Americans. You know, they don't live in Kiev where they're getting over a hundred billion dollars. You know, they live in Hawaii and they're American citizens and they vote in our elections and you know, I don't care who they vote for. Like, I think the Biden administration has a responsibility to do what they can to support these people whose homes have burned down, whose businesses have been torn down and you know, whose lives have been ruined. And there's a huge tragedy going on alongside it. And, you know, they're just completely missing in action. Joe Biden doesn't even know what happened. <laughs> Jordan, how much of this stuff comes down to what you honestly, what you just said there? I think about this a lot when Joe Biden says something cold-hearted like no comment. Yes, Joe Biden's a lifelong jerk, and that's that's not really debatable, but how much of it is the guy just doesn't even really understand what's going on. He's not all there. He probably can't hear the questions, doesn't understand the questions. Without cue cards or Joe Biden standing behind him with her hand up his butt, I don't think he knows what to say. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have experienced, you know, that that grandparent, that parent who's kind of losing it. And when that trajectory starts, you know, I'm not a medical doctor, but it doesn't seem to improve into your, you know, your mid 80s. And, and uh, I think that he just genuinely has no idea what's going on. They're trying to hide him. But, uh, you know, November 2024 is pretty far away. So they have a little bit of a dilemma on his hands. 
he already spends half his time on vacation and then when he's in the white house they're hiding him so it's like you know i guess they're going to try to drag him across the finish line but but if you're a hawaiian right now you know looking to this man for support um you need to look elsewhere to the people who are actually running the country and it would be great to know who those people actually are but it's you know it's, joe biden barely has his physical and cognitive fac faculties together so i don't think that he can be relied upon to be a force for the for the american people in hawaii jordan uh Let's talk about the cold-hearted response from his staff, Joe Biden aside. Okay, let's forget about the cadaver. Hawaii is a very, very, very blue state, a reliably blue state. So I have been a little bit surprised Democrats haven't rallied in their defense. They haven't really said that much. Shoot, even the two idiot senators from Hawaii just made a couple pretty tepid statements about climate change, and they just kind of moved on. Why don't Democrats care? Yeah, Jesse, as you well know, having spent time with some of these animals in Washington, they are the worst people in the world. So what I hear mm -hmm. is going on basically is that they're going to tie, they're going to set up a, a, a Hawaii relief fund, and they're going to tie the relief funding to a, a supplemental funding for Ukraine for weapons and aid. So it, it's a very savvy and just totally degenerate move on the legislative end. And I think that there will be money getting to Hawaii but they will literally hold Hawaiians hostage by the power of the purse because um, you know, McConnell, McCarthy, and Schumer aren't going to let a standalone, as shameful it is, as it is, they're not gonna let a standalone relief bill because they have other political priorities. So these people really, they really don't, just don't care about the people of Maui, you know, regardless of how they vote. They kind of just like take advantage of them. Like, a, you know, they're a stronghold demographic for Democrats, so you don't need to worry about them. And, you know, all those animals in Congress just, you know, have to um, grease the skids of all their lobbyist friends. So they're t this is just another opportunity for them. In another crisis comes another uh, opportunity for Congress. Let's talk about something you brought up before Ukraine, another $200 million package for Ukraine. How is that fight actually going? Lord knows we've sunk a bunch of money and equipment uh, into the fight. Other countries have as well. Very few sources are out there, though, telling me who's winning, who's losing, what's happening. Yeah, it, it doesn't take a uh, Marine like Jesse Kelly to figure out that if you're going backwards all the time, I'm, you're not winning. So, you know, Russia is taking, you know, as, as much as the corporate press wants to spin it, Russia is taking land, Ukraine is losing land. And that's kind of the theme of this war, despite the hundreds of billions of dollars in aid coming through. Um, it's not going well. It, there, there's no way to say it's going well. That You can say that Russia didn't take as much as it wanted for now. Uh, Ukraine certainly had this much hyped counteroffensive which took back like 1% of the territory that has been annexed so far. And then they're like back to losing it again. So, you know, it's a total mess. And Ukraine historically has been ranked as one of the most corrupt countries in Europe, if not arguably the most corrupt country in Europe. So you have like a really big supply chain logistics problem with the weapons and ammunition. We have no idea really where it's going. You have bad leadership. You know, there's more to this war than just uh, this proxy war really than just throwing a bunch of money and weapons at them because if we you know they, they should be winning already so clearly you know something's not uh, you know <laughs> on the receiving end things are completely out of control and you know i think that the corruption the historic corruption in ukraine and through the ukrainian government um you have to say that that has a lot to do with it Jordan, finally, uh, you have a piece up questioning whether Joe Biden even makes it to 2024, and it's a valid question given the deterioration we've seen in front of our eyes. I mean, he wasn't doing great in the 2020 election. It, it, he's a mess now. We'll talk about it. Yeah, I mean, like, you, yesterday, you, you, we already talked about the Maui comment where he seemed to have no idea what was going on on Sunday. And then yesterday... He, um, you know, was like shuffling his feet, and they kept the press like a hundred yards away from him, and he just took a beeline to the Oval Office. So there were no comments, no questions. I believe he has not done a single open press conference this entire year, which is, you know, the press should be at least talking about that. So it seems that, you know, they, they as carefully scripted as they, his handlers want him to be, 
it, it just, it, you know, it seems that, you know, they're a little, they're a lot concerned about his health and his, you know, cognitive wellness, because like, they're going to have to drag this guy across the finish line. And of course, you know, the Democrats are shuffling around the primaries to make sure that they don't get basically embarrassed by RFK Jr. if he gets like a certain percentage in Iowa. So they're, you know, they're planning on doing South Carolina first, but South Carolina primary is in February for the Democrats. So that's not a, not a lot of time to, to swap out Biden. So if they do swap out Biden, I would assume that it's going to happen pretty soon, but who knows? Yeah. Yeah, that's been my theory all along. They're going to dump him for the old jail here at freaking California. All right, Jordan. Thanks, brother. Talk again soon. Thanks, Jesse. All right. We've got lighten the mood coming up. Let's lighten your load first, meaning that timeshare you have. I know it's a burden. I know you don't want it anymore. I know you'd like to stop making those annual payments, the special assessments. I, I know. I know. You know you can do that, right? You're staying in your timeshare and you don't have to. Lone Star Transfer, they're your ticket to freedom. You are one phone call away from dumping that timeshare. Lone Star Transfer is successful 99% of the time. They will get you out legally and permanently. No more calls, no more emails, nothing. All you have to do is call them and they handle everything else. Family business, family business. They put it in writing, the guarantee. 844-310-2646. That's your ticket to freedom. 844-310-2646. Get out of your timeshare. We'll be back with Light in the Moon. All right. It's time to lighten the mood. Now, before we get to Janet Yellen and her drug abuse problems... Let's talk about something. Let's talk about drugs for a minute. Pharmaceuticals. Big Pharma. I, I'm, I don't put down all pharmaceutical drugs. They're life-saving for many people, life-improving for many people. But we have to start looking to more natural solutions more often. We do. I live and die for CB distillery. I love it. Aches, pains, I go right for the CBD roll-on. Just roll it right on. Gone. All natural. Not wrecking my liver with ibuprofen. All natural. I need to sleep. If I have a bad night's sleep or I don't think I'm going to sleep, I don't run for some heavily pharmaceutical doubt thing that's going to have me sleep for 12 hours and wake up half dead. I have the sleep gummies from CB Distillery. I sleep like a baby. I wake up feeling like a million bucks. Natural, man. The highest quality. CBDistillery.com promo code JESSE gets you 20% off everything on the site. Go. Promo code JESSE, all right? CBDistillery.com. Now, I know our financial system is in good hands as long as Janet Yellen is in charge. What so. was it like, the mushroom experience? <laughs> so I, I went with this large group of people, and the person um, who had arranged our dinner did the ordering. Uh, there was a delicious mushroom dish. I was not aware that... Uh, these mushrooms had hallucinogenic uh, properties. I learned that later. I can tell you later, that like in your when you were, were sleeping and having visions, or <laughs> <laughs> well, I I was read that if the mushrooms are cooked properly, which I'm sure they were at this very good restaurant, that they have no impact. Sure, sure seemed to enjoy herself. Sounded a little giggly there. Maybe old Janet Yellen's got a taste for the life. All right, whatever. I'll see you tomorrow.